1975, on the 700 Club, the first African-American co-host of a national TV show. Wow. And he was more surprised than anybody. Let's take a look. <laughs> Ben Kinchlow is known around the world as the longtime co-host of The 700 Club. For 17 years, he captivated audiences with his contagious laughter and charming personality. I'm an American citizen. Ben first appeared as a guest on The 700 Club in 1971 when he was the director of a drug and rehabilitation center. He later joined CBN as the director of counseling. Then in 1975, he joined Pat as co-host of The 700 Club making him the first African-American host of a national TV show. After leaving CBN in 1996, Ben began his own ministry, serving as a humanitarian, minister, and political awareness activist. Well, please welcome back to the 700 Club a dear friend, Ben Kinslow. Hey, baby. Good to see you, my brother. Fifty five years. All right. So good to see you. Thank you, thank you. Come. Good bless you. Sit. <laughs> ben, my first recollection of you, you were from down in Colleen, Texas, where I think you were living on a pig farm or something, <laughs> and, and, and doing something for you were you were trying to help poor people or something, and we put you on the air, and this lady. Uh, was talking to you, you were talking to her, and she had a seven carat flawless diamond ring, big as an <laughs> egg. And she said, you know, I'm having a hard time getting servants. Do you understand that? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> you know, I'm telling you the truth. And Ben looked at her like, of course I'm having trouble getting there. Are you kidding? You remember that? I do indeed. <laughs> and that's just one of your hallmarks of your grace under fire. I mean, honestly. Yeah. Well, you didn't know you were going to be a host. You thought you were just coming down from Colleen to be with us. You exactly. Were, I had no idea. Thing? No clue. So you came here thinking, what, that you were going to just help with the phones or no, something? No, yeah. I thought I was going to be out in the audience. You can see we had a, a, a director. And he would be out there with the with the people and say, you know, Pat on the on the cell, we just got a call that came in from somebody, you know, and I could do that, right? Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> so I'm sitting out there and then I'm doing that, you know, and then you know I'm, I'm shaking hands with the council, hey, how you doing? So good to see you, what a pleasure to be and everything. You know, and I said, no, there's a floor director kept looking at me. And you know, I thought, what are we looking at? But anyway, I just kept shaking hands and I said, Miss Kitchen, we got about two minutes for air, would you take your place? So I thought, well, they want to hear some more of my testimony. So I went over and sat down in the guest chair. Yeah. And I was sitting in the guest chair, you know, and just looking out there going, hey, how you saying? <laughs> <laughs> and he kept looking at me real strangely. And I said, Mr. Kinsler, we got about a minute before we go in the air. Would you please take your place? And I thought, you know what? This would be a great time to ask where my place is. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, where am I supposed to sit? He looked like I'd punched him in the belly. He said, what? They didn't tell you? I said, tell me what? Said Pat and Henry and the Israel, you're the host of the 700 Club. <laughs> and that was the and beginning, was the beginning of the many <laughs> years. Tell us a little bit about Operation Blessing because you were the one who really took the steering wheel of that once Pat had the vision and launched it. Well, again, Dr. Robertson, you know, he's, he's such a gentleman of surprises. <laughs> <clears throat> that was really nicely put. <laughs> Call me up here, we talked about this vision he had had from the Lord. Lord, the Lord gave me Isaiah 58. And he said, we're going to go out and help the poor. We're going to feed the hungry. And we're going to send. He said, that's great, Pat. That's absolutely spectacular. He said, yes, we're going to call it Operation Blessing. I thought, man, that's great. I'm sitting over in a chair like this. I said, Pat, that's just great. He said, we're going to call it Operation Blessing. I said, that's great. He said, yeah, and you're going to be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, Pat, you know? <laughs> That's called executive leadership. Yes, <laughs> and you do it so well. I just want to say. The big thing is you don't give them any notice. <laughs> but the, the important thing is that, you know, Pat always had a heart for mm -hmm. people. That's one of the things that I was so impressed by, Pat. You know, when they brought me on the 700 Club, you know, it's like you didn't see a lot of African Americans on TV, you know, and they only had like what um, the guy with ABC. Mm -hmm. And the guy with CBS, you know, and then I showed up. <clears throat> you know, and then Pat was putting us in, he was, but he was, he was concerned about the people. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. always been the same thing. The same whole, yesterday, today, and forever. I agree. Uh, in all your experience, what, what, what uh, experience touched you the most? Do you remember? Um, 
all of them, you know, the, the beginning and, the, and the, the time we went to, to maximum security. Remember? I, oh, I remember seeing that. That was, that was a powerful. trip, let me yeah. tell you. Tell uh, us you about know, that. Give us one. Pat would do things like that. I mean, we could go to jail, but this guy didn't just take us to jail. He took us to prison for prisoners. Yeah. That's in right. other words, if prisoners couldn't get along in the prison they was in, they sent them to this prison. That's <laughs> That's right. And Pat says, we're going to go down and talk to them. And so this is, you know, we had a, oh, you can see these guys out here, man. Murph the Surf, remember? That's yeah. Murph the Surf That's right Murph. there. Yeah, that's Murph true. the Surf was there, and the Catch Me Killer was there, you know, and all these. You know, he got caught. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I want to say to Ben, I stood up and before I talked to these guys, they were hardened killers. I mean, they were they were hit men for the mob. I mean, one guy had killed 20 people. I mean, this was a tough crowd. And uh, I thought, I'm going to, they locked us in, you know? <laughs> really. You hadn't thought about that part of it. Yeah, we couldn't get out if they, if they started doing something. We, yeah. we were in. All right, so Ben was my straight guy, and I said, all right, Ben, it's yours. So he took off, and man, if he'd been a professional comedian, he could have, before it was finished, those guys were sh slapping each other on the back and laughing. It was, it was hilarious. And people came to the Lord. Well, well that was I, after when Pat got it. I gave a message about, uh, I, you know, I, I talked in, in, you know, street language and uh, about uh, Jesus taking the rap for you, you mm -hmm. know. And when I was having that whip come down, those men were wincing. You could see them, ah, uh, you know, and they, they felt it was so powerful. And, and, and they came up to, to uh, hug me. And later on, one guy said, you know who that guy who killed a coven is? I said, no. He said, he's the most feared man in this prison. He's a killer. And he came up, he, f he found the oh, Lord. Really? It was, it was, I mean, it, yes, it was. the yeah. anointing of the Lord came on that prison. It was a totally different thing. God's spirit came down. Mm -hmm. You know, but that, that is <clears throat> really true. I don't know, people don't realize, you know, that in prison, mm -hmm. they send you to prison because you can't get along in the population, right? But the population. right? And then they, when they get you in prison, they have guys that can't get along in those prisons. So they sent them to this prison. This is where all the murderers and killers and really tough guys were. And here we were preaching to them. And when they came up there, you know, <laughs> first we were a little concerned because this guy ran up here to put his arms around Pat. I thought, uh oh, here we go, you know. <laughs> but he just came up, hugged him and told him how much he loved me. And, wow. and that is just the power, yeah. that's the power of the Holy Spirit, oh, man. What a, what a time, we'll never forget it. All right, it Terry. Was most memorable. Well, we have some video of one of the first times I was a guest on the show with these two back in 1976. <laughs> Beware the... I don't know why Jesus loved me. Jesus loved me. I don't know why he cared. Why he cared. Down the tuck. Look at... <laughs> <laughs> that was... That was post Miss America by a couple of years yeah. because you know you knew I was a believer. I came on the That's club right. first time was over in Portsmouth, so it was great to be able to come back here years later and actually sit between the two oh, of you. Can you imagine us sitting next to a Miss America? Oh, These man, two old ranky guys deal. sitting next to a Miss America. <laughs> yeah. We're so honored. We, we had some wonderful times together. We, sure we really, really did. Well, you can see more of Ben Kinchlow in an exclusive behind-the-scenes interview on our Facebook page. All you have to do is go to facebook.com slash 700club and see all the fun that's been had over the years. Facebook? About I'm going to be on Facebook? You're going to be on Facebook, yep. Yeah. Millions wow. of clicks. <laughs> What's Facebook? People are going to well, like it's you. The place <laughs> <laughs> They call it social media. <laughs> 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 <laughs>